Have you ever wanted to make your own podcast? We recommend using a really great hosting service and set of tools all in one place called Anchor by Spotify. It is absolutely the easiest way to create and share a podcast. The folks at Anchor really have thought of everything. So you can just focus on your own creativity and your story. Here's how it works. Anchor helps you record and edit podcasts right from your device or computer. You could probably start creating today. You can distribute your podcast or you know, share to the most popular listening places, including Spotify, of course, with a single tap. Also, this is pretty cool. Anchor is the only place you can publish a video podcast to Spotify. With Anchor, creators can even earn money in a variety of ways, including ads like this one and podcast subscriptions. And best of all, Anchor is free. Download the Anchor app or go to anchor.fm to get started. Welcome to episode 22. We're almost done with the season of season two of the Adventures of Power Dog and Dogland. Things are about to get really exciting. Thank you, Hank. You may remember when our story left off that Power Dog had traveled with Bernie Sandals to go visit the space horse known as Briscoe. They bade Briscoe farewell, and as they hopped onto Tyler, the galactic toot-traveling cow's back, Power Dog smiled and patted his satchel, happy to have his own sound bouncer, as well as a brand new listener's library card that he could later use to check out sounds from all over the universe. Had they not been in such a terrible hurry to find his pack and finally head to the dragon world of Draconis, he'd be asking to access the listener's library and getting ready for music notation class right at this very moment. Bernie, riding on Tyler's back right behind Power Dog, seemed energized and focused. Power Dog could tell that it was wonderful for Bernie to be reunited with his old pal. He pictured Bernie and Briscoe as youngsters and smiled inside his bubble as he leaned against one of Bernie's strong forelegs. Then, off in the distance but nearing to them quickly, or rather they were nearing to it quickly, was a strange and wild-looking world. Power Dog knew right down into his bones that it was Draconis. It was bright, bright red in color, with several glittering moons swinging around it on tilted orbits, and it had swirling clouds that looked like great shimmering red and purple peacock feathers reflecting in the sunlight. In fact, This part of the Dogmos was indeed closer to their sun, which made Power Dog wonder if Draconis would feel hot like the desert where Cody and his brother lived most of the time. Did the dragons of Draconis also create dens and spend time underground? As they drew nearer still, Power Dog started to feel hot, and as he could feel President Sandal squirming, he assumed that they all felt hotter because Draconis was hot. He also felt a thumping in his chest as his heartbeat raced. His paws were sweaty and he had a funny taste in his mouth. Have you ever gotten a funny taste in your mouth when things are getting exciting or even scary? Remember when we talked about the fight, flight, or freeze response created in the amazing part of your brain called the amygdala? Well, it turns out that just like the universe, Your whole entire body is on your side, and sometimes fear or anxiety will cause a change in the chemicals in your body. If you are noticing a funny taste in your mouth and feeling anxious, 
then talk to your grown-ups about it. You may observe your own powers of noticing grow, just like Power Dog. Being that they were still traveling through space, Power Dog couldn't really talk about it with Bernie, a grown-up he certainly trusted. But he could notice it and also make a note to ask his parents about it later, when they would certainly be reunited. Not only is it powerful to be good at noticing, it is also very powerful to notice when the time and place are right. Power Dog smiled as he thought of his parents, and then Tyler started to really slow down. In fact, Tyler reared up on their hind legs a bit and just kind of floated in a bit of an orbit around the strange bright red world. Then Tyler pointed their hooves at one of those glittering moons and they seemed to draw to it like a magnet until they landed on the moon's rocky bright purple surface. Bernie and Power Dog slid off of Tyler's back and before their back legs hit the purple stones and crystals below, Tyler nodded, smiled, and took off with a... (laughs) Bernie swung his head around and tapped on the bubble around his head. He then shrugged and looked at Power Dog, as if to say, I don't know what's next. Power Dog poked his bubble a few times and wished he could more freely sniff this place to hunt for clues. Just as he took a couple of steps, a large glassine bubble with rainbow swirls formed around both of them. Oh no! He yelped, and the metallic taste in his mouth intensified. Bernie stood up on his hind legs and put his paws against the bubble, pushing and testing before the bubble began to float with both of them inside of it. Within mere minutes, they were floating into the bright gleaming red of the large planet below. And when the bubble came to a pause, the rainbow swirls were thicker and harder to see through. Power Dog found himself clinging to Bernie, who was holding onto Power Dog right back. Then, a big crystal claw of sorts came sticking right through the bubble and the whole thing popped. Next, the Tyler bubbles around their heads also popped. Both Bernie and Power Dog shook their heads. And when they opened their eyes, staring back at them was a familiar face. Lupo, shouted Power Dog enthusiastically. Oh, what a relief. Yes, said Bernie. It looks like you made it here before us after all, young Fennec. Lupo just glared at them icily, pointing the large crystal claw, which now appeared to be more of a sword, right at them. Lupo? Power Dog looked at Lupo and didn't see the almost friend he had left behind in Time Yen. He did see the Fliberty Gibbet's amulet was still around Lupo's neck, but there was no friendship in Lupo's eyes. And even more disturbing, Lupo's eyes were glowing ice blue again. Just move that way, said Lupo coldly as they pointed the crystal sword towards a row of mostly open caves. They could now all see carved into the side of the gleaming bright red solid garnet, or maybe even solid ruby, mountains they were all standing on the side of. The caves looked like shallow little theater stages lined up in a row. Bernie raised one of his big, thick paws. Okay, okay. You know we come in peace, young one. We'll go with you. Lupo just kept pointing to the caves. And for lack of any better ideas, Bernie and Power Dog nodded. Once they neared the caves, Power Dog saw rows and rows of golden square cages. Into the kennels, dogs, ordered Lupo sharply as they poked the air with the crystal sword menacingly. Oh, Lupo, you do not have to do this, exclaimed Power Dog. But as he stepped inside the first cave, he saw them, his pack. (coughs) Mumble yelled Fetcher, Taffy, and Tuffy all together. Dogs, shouted Power Dog. He was so happy they seemed to be okay. But the first seed of concern was planted when he saw that they didn't seem to be able to say his name. Each one of them was in a separate kennel, and each one looked sad. 
And they were making sad puppy noises, too. <laughs> Silence! They heard a booming voice say. Bernie, who was just outside of a large, empty kennel, pivoted quickly to face the booming voice. But Lupo pointed their crystal sword at him menacingly. So Bernie, with a very sad look on his face, backed into the kennel slowly. Lupo slammed the door shut and locked it. Power Dog turned and saw a massive dragon hovering in the air, and the dragon's eyes were as big as Power Dog's whole body. Two smaller dragons, who were still three times Power Dog's size, flapped and fluttered their leathery wings on either side of and slightly in front of the gigantic dragon. The namer, Power Dog thought, but he was so scared that he couldn't open his mouth, let alone say anything. Power Dog felt the pointy tip of Lupo's crystal sword push him towards an empty kennel, and so, with his whole body trembling, he crawled inside the kennel without taking his eyes off of the dragons. They were so much more frightening than the sky dragons on Dogland, even more so than the head scene changer dragon, definitely more so than Comet, who was nowhere to be seen here. <laughs> Bellowed the huge dragon. More dogs. The universe keeps sending me dogs. I guess we'll open a dog zoo and add it to my collection. The two dragon sidekicks laughed <laughs> and floated down to the ledge in front of the caves. Power Dog noticed that one dragon was bright red and the other was dark purple. They folded their wings delicately along their backs and Power Dog noticed that their wings and the wings of the very large dragon looked a lot like the wings of the sky puppies back on Dogland. The bright red dragon sidekick pointed to Power Dog and Bernie and said, They have satchels and capes too, take them! The purple dragon clapped its long fingered hands excitedly. Yes, Fox, bring us the treasures, more Dogland treasures! Lupo moved as though in a trance, yanking the satchels and capes from Power Dog and President Sandals without even making eye contact just threatening them with a crystal sword. Then, Lupo tossed their things to the dragons, who immediately started to dump the contents out into a little pile. They were pawing through Power Dog's things, tossing aside each item with disinterest, when the large dragon bellowed. Well, anything good? Did these ones at least have the intelligence to bring me treasures that would appeal? They shook their head no as they rolled Power Dog's sound bouncer across the cave floor and into a small pit. It made a noise that made Power Dog think there were other trinkets and things in that pit. More doggy toys and garbage, said the bright red dragon. But not even a shiny whistle, they said mockingly while Tuffy whined loudly in dismay. Oh no, thought Power Dog. That's right, TikTok's whistle. Had Tuffy even gotten a chance to blow on it? And that's when he saw it dangling from the red dragon's finger like a bit of jewelry. Then the purple dragon clapped excitedly as the bright red dragon dumped out Bernie Sandal's satchel and they discovered the sound gems. Treasure, treasure. They both squealed with delight. And sir, said the red dragon to the large dragon, they brought gems and none of them are red. Bernie perked up and said, yes, we have brought you these precious gems. Could it be possible that we could all talk this out? We don't need these cages. We come in peace. The large dragon shifted focus from the gems to Bernie and said, silence. I never said you could talk. And even though you had the good sense to bring me these tiny treasures, you shall be named and silenced. Bernie shrunk back a bit and then stood tall and proud in his kennel. He stared right into the dragon's large eyes unflinchingly and said, 
My apologies. Are you the famous dragon we have heard of? Are you the namer? By this point, Fetcher, Taffy, and Tuffy were all shaking their heads as if to say no. And the two smaller dragons were staring, mouths open in shock at Bernie. In a way that made Power Dog think that no one speaks directly to this giant dragon. Power Dog looked over to Lupo, who wasn't actually watching any of it. How strange. The Fennec, whose eyes were still ice blue, seemed to be staring off into the distance, away from the mountains. Oh, I know who you are, Bernie Sandals, said the namer. And you shall be named. Your new name is Burned Out Sandball. The dragon's sidekick shrieked and laughed at this. <laughs> Clapping their dragon hands. Bernie opened his mouth to answer and then shut it again quickly as if an invisible muzzle had been placed around his snout. And on top of that, he was wriggling and scratching himself against the cage as if he were battling the worst itch of a lifetime. <gasps> Power Dog gasped. What just happened? Now, bring me those gems, pronounced the namer. And the sidekick dragons flew up and got to work adorning the namer along his wings and shoulders with the glittery, shiny sound gems. The namer nodded every third or fourth gem to indicate to the sidekicks that they could have one and they fawned over the generous gifts as they festooned the tiny bits and shiny baubles onto themselves. They never once figured out that they could be playing sounds or songs or music or noise from any of the gems. Power Dog noticed that the purple dragon was now holding Bernie Sandal's sound bouncer, and he wondered what song or sound or music or noise might be on it. He saw that Bernie was staring at it too. The namer then turned to look at Power Dog, which made Power Dog shiver. You shall be named, he bellowed, then paused, smirked, and said, Later, bye! He then turned tail and flew off with the two sidekick dragons following after. As they were nearly out of sight, Power Dog noticed that Bernie's sound bouncer had been casually discarded and had rolled across the floor to rest right in front of Power Dog's cage. He looked over to President Sandals, who was wiggling his eyebrows wildly and nodding his head, straining to speak, but unable to under this terrible dragon enchantment. He then looked to Lupo, who was leaning on their sword and still gazing into the distance and paying no heed to the rest of the dogs. And then he looked to his pack, all three were looking at the sound bouncer and whining plaintive little whines. <laughs> Power Dog reached his paw to the bouncer, but couldn't get a hold of it. It was just out of reach for grasping, especially with the cage limiting how far he could reach. But he did realize he was pretty sure that he could roll it to Bernie's kennel. Maybe Bernie would know what to do? He reached and reached and reached, shoved it as best he could in Bernie's direction. And Lupo turned around to look, but Power Dog acted quickly and shouted, Lupo, you don't have to do this. If we work together, we can save Meowie and save Dogland. The distraction worked and Lupo turned their icy gaze onto Power Dog and sighed. <sighs> Seriously, why didn't he muzzle you too? Come on, Lupo, we worked together before and we can do it again. He looked past Lupo to see the utter confusion on his brother and cousin's faces. Perhaps even disbelief? That look on Taffy's face was anger for sure. How does he know our names, Lupo? How is this enchantment working? How does he know so much about Dogland? Power Dog tried very hard to keep a calm tone. I am saving Meowie, Power Dog, but only Meowie. It's the best I can do. You cannot beat the namer. You can only join him. Lupo seemed to be speaking in a trance and looking off into the distance again. 
in the direction that the dragons had flown in. After a long pause, Lupo fixed their icy blue gaze onto Power Dog and opened their mouth to speak. But it was right then that Bernie Sandals got his paws on the sound bouncer and was able to press down on it hard enough to release its sound recording. It said loudly, Hope is the thing with feathers. All eyes were on the bouncer as Lupo lunged to grab it, but it slipped out of their paws as if it was covered in slippery oil and had its own animal will, and it flew up into the ceiling of the cave as it began to roll around on the ceiling and play a recording that put a broad smile on Bernie's face. Power Dog was grinning too as the sound bouncer wobbling and dancing on the ceiling blasted loudly. Hope is a thing with feathers that perches in the soul and sings the tune without the words and never stops at all. The sweetest in the gale is heard and sore must be the storm that could abash the little bird that kept so many warm. I've heard it in the chillest land and on the strangest sea, yet never an extremity it asked a crumb of me. All right, that's it for now. If you like that poem you just heard, then be sure to check out the poet Emily Dickinson, who wrote it. Emily was an American poet born way back in 1830. She liked to spend most of her time in her own room, and she wrote over 1,800 beautiful poems. Wow. Yeah, starting when she was just a kid, like you. Which is very amazing. Mm Mm-hmm. Now, when a young Bernie Sandals heard her poem from the listener's library, Hope is the Thing with Feathers, it immediately became his favorite. (laughs) Now, I'm joined by my co-author and the eight-year-old with deep dogland knowledge, my kid, Hank. Hi, Hank. Hello. (laughs) Hi. How exciting is it that we are finally on the dragon planet Draconis. It's just so exciting. Yeah. Hey, Mom, do you want a joke? Yes, please. How do you know if a dragon is excited? Hmm, how? They get all fired up. <laughs> do you have another joke for me? Sure. What do you get when, um, what do you get when you cross a dragon with an insect? What? A dragonfly. (laughs) You have one last joke for me? Sure. What kind of stories do dragons like to tell? Hmm. What? Long tails. (laughs) (laughs) Thank you, listeners. If you liked what you heard, you can see more content at our website, Power Dog Adventures, all one word, dot com. There you can sign up for our infrequently emailed newsletter and also submit any good dog jokes. And we'll be forever grateful if you feel like telling your friends about the show, too. If you are looking for more great shows, then please check out the other members of Kids Listen, a grassroots organization dedicated to high quality audio for kids and families. There are well over a hundred great shows to find there. Ask your grown-up to check out kidslisten.org to find out more. Special thanks to our creative partner, the inimitable Jason Rourke, who makes these stories sound extra good with his wise counsel, recording, sound design, and even original music. This podcast has been made possible in part by funding provided by the Regional Arts and Culture Council in Portland, Oregon. Thank you, Rack. It has been made even more possible by listeners like you, Thank you so much for your support and extra big thanks to our Patreon patrons who get early access to all of our episodes ad-free, as well as goodies and merch and birthday shout outs at any level of support. We are not joking even a little when we say we could not do this without you.
The Adventures of Power Dog and Dogland is created in the ancestral lands of the Cowlitz, Multnomah, Cathlamet, Clackamas, Tumwater, Tualatin, Kalapuya, Wasco, Molala, Watlala, Bands of the Chinook, and other indigenous nations and tribes of the first people who made their homes along the rivers here in what is now called Portland, Oregon. And special thanks to our own Granny and Gramps who helped us write and record our Power Dog theme song that you'll hear at the end of the episode. Hey, Granny and Gramps, what key did y'all say that's in? It's, it's in, in D for Dogland. special tales to tell and when we come together all our tales will wag as well woof woof Woo!